Your blood pressure has been creeping up and you've cut back on sodium. You exercise. Maybe you even take medication. But what if you're still missing one critical piece of the puzzle? Hi, I'm Dr. Brian and today we're talking about that missing piece. Potassium. That's the silent partner in blood pressure control that most people and even a lot of doctors overlook. In this video, I'm going to break down why is potassium so important? How does potassium lower blood pressure? Why potassium rich foods are better than supplements? And when do you really need to be careful about having too much potassium. Let's get into it. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian. We always hear about cutting sodium to lower blood pressure, but increasing potassium may be just as important and sometimes even more effective. The American College of Cardiology and the American Heart Association both recommend it. Why is that? Well, because there's really strong evidence from large population studies and clinical trials that show potassium can lower blood pressure, reduce stroke risk, and overall is good for your long-term heart health. But how much can it really help? Well, in people with normal blood pressure, potassium will decrease your blood pressure about two points. But in people with high blood pressure, around four to five points decrease of your blood pressure. And here's the kicker. If your diet is really high in sodium, the benefits of potassium can double. So how does potassium actually help? First, it helps your body get rid of extra salt or sodium through your kidneys because sodium normally pulls water into your bloodstream. That increases blood volume and with it blood pressure. Potassium, it helps flush out that sodium. Result, less fluid, less pressure. Potassium also directly relaxes your blood vessels and reduces something called salt sensitivity. That's something that affects a certain number of people that have really high blood pressure spikes after eating salty foods. And here's what happens inside your kidneys. When potassium is low, your body flips a switch. It activates something called the NCC. That's a sodium chloride transporter. Think of it like a salt gatekeeper. It tells your kidneys, hold on to that sodium. But when potassium is high, the NCC shuts off. Then your kidneys flush out the sodium and your blood pressure comes down. Doctors call this the potassium switch. It's not just helpful, it's part of your body's natural blood pressure system. Now you might be wondering, can't I just take a potassium pill? Well, technically yes you can, but for most people, getting potassium from whole foods is safer, healthier, and more effective. And here's why. Whole foods give you fiber, antioxidants, and other healthy, heart-friendly nutrients. Too much potassium from supplements can be risky, especially if you have kidney disease or takes certain medications, which we'll talk about a little later. Your body also absorbs potassium from food more gently and more effectively than from pills. Now here's an additional key concept. It's not just about potassium alone. It's about the balance between sodium and potassium. Because when potassium is high and sodium is low, your blood pressure drops. Now the sodium potassium ratio is much more important than either nutrient by itself. So don't just cut salt, add potassium. It's this combination that will send the right message to your kidneys to lower that blood pressure. So how much potassium do you need and how do you get it? Well, the recommended daily amount is about 4,700 milligrams per day. And most Americans, they get less than half of that, but it's easy to fix naturally. Aim for four to five servings of fruit and vegetables a day. That's it. And you can focus on potassium rich foods like an avocado that has nearly a thousand milligrams of potassium, a banana, 420 milligrams, just a cup of cooked spinach, 800 milligrams. And if you want to add some meat in there, a small three ounce segment of salmon, 500 milligrams of potassium. Now, instead of counting milligrams, just fill your plate with plants. But it's not for everyone. Who should be cautious? Because potassium is great for most people, but some really need to be careful. Number one, if you have chronic kidney disease, or if you take potassium sparing diuretics, that's water pills like spironolactone, or if you take specific blood pressure medicines, especially the ones that end in IL or AN. These are known as ACE inhibitors or angiotensin receptor blockers. Lisinopril, enalapril, losartan, or valsartan. Any of those, or if your doctor has warned you about electrolyte issues, always check with your provider before increasing your potassium. For many people, increasing potassium is a no-brainer. So if you've been focusing only on salt, it's time to flip the switch and bring potassium to the table. If you found this video helpful, hit like and subscribe. I'm Dr. Brian. Thanks for watching.